The Odyssey, an abridged audio adaptation, written by Stephen Andreation. Sire, a man wishes to speak to you. He was found on our shore. Bring forth this traveler. Allow him to speak. Thank you, my liege. It has been a long and fruitless journey. What is your name? I am Odysseus, ruler of Ithaca. And how is it you have been brought here? Do tell of your great voyage. Gladly, sire. It all began ten years ago. After a barrage of raiding on our way home from Troy, a great storm stranded my ship upon an island populated by very strange men. The people of this land ate nothing but fruit. They gifted my men the lotus, which had some alarming effects on them. They lost all motivation to return home and longed for nothing but to remain on the island and indulge in its fruit. I had to drag my men back to our ship just to leave. Thankfully, it wasn't long before they returned to their senses. We came upon an island with a large cave. Upon closer inspection, the cave was found to have been filled with food and drink. While it seemed suspiciously convenient, I could not deny my men a chance to indulge. We entered the cave and ate the food. We grew tired and eventually fell asleep. As we slept, a large cyclops whose name was Polyphemus, returned to his cave, leading a flock of sheep. The Cyclops rolled a great stone over the opening of the cave. He found some of my men and managed to grab and eat two of them. After eating, he too fell asleep. The next morning, he left the cave, but not without eating two more of my men and closing off the entrance behind him. While he was out, I devised a plan. The Cyclops returned that evening, this time I offered up some rather strong wine that I had brought with me. He thanked me gratefully, and asked my name. I responded that my name was No Man. The Cyclops fell into a drunken sleep. At night, my crew and I sharpened a large timber to a point and beat at the end. We carried it up to the eye of the Cyclops and drove the timber in with all our might. The Cyclops screamed in pain and attracted other Cyclopses to the cave entrance. But when they asked what was the matter, Polyphemus could only say, No man is hurting me. The other Cyclopses laughed at him and left. Now that the Cyclops was blind, we could make our escape. We tied ourselves to the bellies of his great sheep and were let out in the morning. We quickly rushed back to the ship, but I foolishly called back to the Cyclops, gloating that it was Odysseus who had wounded him and not No Man. He thus called up to his father Poseidon, and I feared he placed a curse upon me. We soon came upon the floating island of Aeolia, where the great Oleus, keeper of the winds, resided. He allowed us to rest there for one month, and brought about a west wind that would carry us back to Ithaca. Before we departed, he entrusted me with an oxhide bag that possessed all the remaining winds. With that, we sailed back home. It was a long voyage. Riddled with excitement, I could not sleep for its entirety. By the time our home was in sight, I had collapsed with exhaustion. My crew, fraught with curiosity, opened the bag. A roaring wind burst out and blew our ship back to Aeolia. Guilt-ridden, I pleaded to the Keeper to help us again, but he feared that higher powers had interfered with my voyage, and that there was a reason for my failure. Thus, we parted ways, and I continued the slow voyage home. We came upon another island, this one ruled by a woman known as Circe. Unbeknownst to us at the time, but Circe possessed great powers of sorcery, and turned much of my crew into swine. Thankfully, I was unaffected by her powers, and managed to convince her to turn my crew back. We rested on the island 
for close to a year before deciding to try to return home again. Cersei explained that the only person who could help was Tiresias, but to speak to him would require a trip to the Underworld. We traveled a long way before coming upon the entrance of the Underworld. We performed a ceremonial sacrifice and were granted access to the spirits. I spoke to many. Ancestors long gone, brothers at arms lost at Troy. I saw the likes of Agamemnon, Achilles, and Ajax, great warriors now residing in a breathless nightmare. Tiresias then appeared and explained how I was to return home. Poseidon had cursed me, but that there was still hope of returning if no harm came to Helios' golden cows, which resided on the island of Trinacia. If that were to happen, my return would be substantially delayed. I graciously accepted his wisdom and returned to Circe's island. Circe agreed to help map our voyage home, but she warned it would not be a safe one. Many dangers laid ahead. The first of such dangers were the sirens, whose songs were of such beauty that sailors were lured to their island. So they would face a terrible fate. To avoid this, my crew had their ears with wax so that they could not hear as we passed the island. I could not miss such an opportunity and ordered my men to tie me to the mast. Their songs were the most enchanting sounds I had ever heard, compelling me with all my might to reach them. Thankfully, my men had properly secured me, and I remained on board our ship. Our luck would not hold, however, as we encountered the fierce Scylla, a six-headed monster overlooking the sea from a cave on a cliff. Below her resided Charybdis, a great maw that devoured and regurgitated anything that sailed over it. Before we could devise a plan, Scylla ate six of my men. This distracted her, as all our mouths were filled quickly dashed between the two beasts, and were onward to safety. We came upon the island of Thrinacia. I protested to my crew that we could not rest here as I feared we'd be tempted to eat the great cows that Tiresias had warned me about. My words fell upon deaf ears, and we stayed the night. A great storm then stranded us, and gradually we ran out of food. I grew begged to sacrifice one of the many cows upon the island, but I forbade it, fearing for the consequences. Behind my back, my crew, starved and desperate, killed one of the cows and ate it. When the seas had steadied enough to set off again, we did. As we sailed, a great storm formed in the sky. The sound of thunder roared in the air, and one of Zeus's great bolts struck the ship blasting into splinters. My crew were all killed. I hung to a timber and drifted across the sea, unsure if I were to live or die. It is then that I came upon this island, where the Princess Nausicaa found me on the shore. That, my liege, has been my voyage so far. Your tale has moved me, Odysseus. I will bestow upon you a great ship to finish your voyage home. Now go forth, Odysseus. Return. <laughs>